Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. This is in the District Court of Greenwood County, Kansas, case entitled State of Kansas versus Holly A. Reynolds. Uh, it is case number 2021 CR 137. Jill Gillette appears as Greenwood County Attorney, Richard Paw as Defense Counsel, Holly Reynolds. Uh, now appears uh, about 15 minutes late. Ms. Reynolds, this proceeding was scheduled to begin at 1 o'clock p.m. today. You weren't here until 15 minutes later. Why is that? Uh, the road construction had a pilot car, and we had to wait for the pilot car. Like, about 10 minutes outside of town. Last time, they didn't have a pilot car when they had the road construction. So we weren't we have, prepared. We have all participants uh, on the meeting now. We will proceed further. This is a uh, scheduled further hearing on a warrant to show cause matter. The court believes that the current allegation before the court is failing to report to her officer as directed. Is that a, a fair summary, Mr. Ketley? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I may address you further later regarding it. Uh, I also will note for the record that there was some research done regarding the issue of continuing jurisdiction of this court over this matter. The court does note that at a previous hearing in this case, uh, where the probation in this case was reviewed, I believe that was the hearing of November 18 of 2022, the court reinstated probation and extended it for one year, 12 months, from the original expiration date. I think the original expiration date would have been January 27 of 2023, which means that the 12-month extension went to January 27 of 2024. The warrant to show cause that's before us today was actually filed even before the expiration date on this case. So it's the court's ruling that it has jurisdiction to proceed further. Mr. Paul, what are your client's intentions regarding the failing to report to her officer uh, allegation? Judge, the which warrant to show cause, the only warrant to show, oh, I, I see it now, Judge. Never mind. It, that was that was done on January 11th, but it wasn't filed until the 10th of April, Your Honor. You mean the service return on it wasn't filed until the 10th of April? No, no, she was arrested on 4-7, Judge. Okay, looks like everything is. No, that, that, is, that is correct, Your Honor. All right, the court will proceed further then. And again, your client's intentions? Judge, when I spoke to her last time before we had this uh, issue, her her intentions were at that time was to waive her evidentiary hearing and admit to two violations, as outlined in the motion to revoke probation on four twenty three of twenty four. All right, Ms. Reynolds, you've been present when your attorney made an announcement on your behalf that you would now intend to waive any formal due process hearing that you'd otherwise be entitled to and instead stipulate and agree that you committed the a failing to report violation, which was alleged by Mr. Ketley in his most recent warrant to show cause. In waiving your hearing, you'd be waiving the right to require the state to present evidence and prove the allegation by a preponderance of the evidence. You could challenge the state's evidence with the assistance of your lawyer, Mr. Paul, present your own evidence, and confront the state's witnesses unless good cause was shown. Among other lesser remedies that the court has, the court could consider an outright revocation of your probation and having you serve the remaining balance of your sentence locked up. Ms. Reynolds, do you understand these things? Yes, Your Honor. Is it your intention to waive a hearing in this case and stipulate and agree that you committed the failing to report violation as alleged? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The court finds that the defendant has knowingly waived her right to a uh, hearing in this case and stipulates and agrees that she committed the failing, a failing to report violation as alleged by Mr. Ketley. Uh, also, I'll obviously ask for recommendations from counsel, but I want to start off with Mr. Ketley. Mr. Ketley, uh, your allegation was made some time ago. What is, has been the track record of performance of your client since you filed this warrant to show cause in January? Uh, I don't, I don't believe I've had, haven't had any contact with her, Your Honor. Since okay. uh, I think the last time she reported me on October eighteenth, 
and I set her up for November 1st, and then I haven't heard anything since then. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Ms. Gillette, uh, based on what's currently before the court, what are the state's recommendations regarding an appropriate disposition here? Judge, in this matter, um, we had a previous violation hearing. She was to have a 60-day sentence or sanction. There was a compassionate release for her due to um, her father passing away, allowing her to um, go to the funeral, which is not usually a thing that always happens. Sometimes we just say you're in trouble it's too bad you don't get to go to a funeral but in this case we allowed that for her she has to have 60 days done as a sanction last time uh, promises to do what she needed to do promises to go to treatment um, and here we are with her basically absconded um, so with her absconction from supervision she just took off and with her taking off um, November 1st, 2023, she didn't report and hasn't reported since. Normally when someone's in trouble, they get right back in and talk to their officer and get into treatment. But instead, Ms. Reynolds has not done that. So my recommendations have to be an outright revocation based on her being an absconder and refusing to um comply with anything with her ISO. She still had a balance due at the time that we filed the motion to revoke probation. What is that current balance? It was $858 at that time. All right, thank you. Mr. Paul, as defense counsel, what is your recommendation regarding an appropriate disposition here? Judge, I would ask that the court sanction her and then reinstate her. I know she's been working in Newton. I know that she's been working hard on her sobriety. I believe she would tell the court that, uh, you know, as, as evidence today, she didn't have a ride. She lives in Newton, Kansas. Judge, I also don't believe that there's been any other, any other criminal matters against Miss Reynolds during this whole time, which is something we rarely see in these cases. Usually when people are not reporting they're out doing bad things and from what miss reynolds tells me she's been out being doing good things trying to better herself work a job you know keep that job and uh so that's why my recommendation your honor is to sanction her with what she feels appropriate and reinstate her very well uh holly reynolds yes, your honor. At this time, I would address you personally, and I'll ask you, do you have any personal statements that you wish to make to the court in mitigation of punishment here or anything further that you personally would like to present to the court in addition to what Mr. Paul has already presented on your behalf? Um, I'm sorry for being absconded. I didn't become absconded just for no reason. It was just, I had a mental breakdown because my dad died. The guy I was with for 10 years died from kidney failure. It was just so many deaths, one right after the other, that I just, I, I couldn't handle it anymore. And I mentally broke down and I quit seeing everybody. I quit going to corrections. I quit going to work. I quit doing everything and got really depressed. It's been really hard on me. I mean, there was five deaths all within a year. I mean, it was really bad. And I'm still trying to deal with it and it's hard. Okay, anything else? Okay, I, I saw the shake of your head, no. So I will perceive that you've completed your statement to the court. Uh, Ms. Reynolds, uh, you were placed in this case on reporting probation with a heavy emphasis on the word reporting. Uh, ISOs often are very aware of community resources that their clients can be referred to when they're having stressful situations. I'm not making light of the pain that's associated with any of the deaths that you referred to in your statement. Everyone has to deal with the tragedy of death at some point in their lives. When you've had a history of any type of drug offenses, it's really important that you stay 
in contact with your supervising officer, let him know what's going on with you, and then let him make the appropriate referrals or to try to get you some sort of assistance with whatever problems that you're having. What you cannot do is just check out and, and use that as an excuse to stop your program. What you do in that instance, Ms. Reynolds, is essentially say, I am not a candidate for the reporting probation that the judge wanted me to complete. Rather, what you're essentially doing is saying, I will just face the music of doing my time. That apparently is where we are in this case, Ms. Reynolds. You've had ample opportunity to correct your behaviors, report to your officer, seek his help, if, if necessary, demand his help and to utilize the resources that are out in the community to keep you in the community. You've elected not to do that. On top of that, Ms. Reynolds, you're habitually late for court, including being 15 minutes late today. And indeed, there may have been some road construction and a pilot car situation, but you should have left earlier. You should allow extra time. I just don't think you take court seriously, Ms. Reynolds, much less supervision, or probation, or anything else that was involved in your case. So the only viable alternative is what the prosecutor recommends in this case, and that is an outright revocation of your probation, and that will be the order of the court. The court finds that this defendant has been willfully non-compliant with the terms and conditions of her probation, that it's not in her best interest to be on a probation, which she clearly is not amenable to successfully finish, uh, Holly Reynolds will make promises and not follow through on them. But she's been given ample opportunity and even been punished for previous noncompliance and doesn't even take serious jail sanctions seriously enough to conform her behavior to what's expected by the court. Therefore, the court does order Holly Reynolds to serve the remaining balance of her sentence in Department of Corrections custody. Court orders her to be taken into custody by the representatives of the Greenwood County Sheriff's Office until her custody can be transferred to serve the remaining balance of the 20-month prison sentence that was originally ordered in the case. With that said, Ms. Gillette, I would ask your office to do appropriate research and determine the appropriate number of jail time credit days to which this defendant is entitled and include that in the journal entry of revocation, which will stem from today. I know I do know she has some jail time credit. I will note that she does have a 12 months post three supervision period, which this court reannounces. And I believe that she was in a 20% good time credit category with this particular offense uh, of uh, possession of methamphetamine, a level five drug felony. All right, with that order made, uh, Ms. Gillette, is there anything further that you need clarification on? No, I was looking at her jail time credit. And I don't know if she's got any charges out of Saline County, but she did spend an overnight in there in June, so. All right. I will say that whatever balance exists in this case is declared to be immediately due and payable and collectible. It can be referred to collection agency for further handling. What if I can pay it? No additional fees will be imposed today. It does appear that her balance previously was $858, but the court will not add any more bids amounts, uh, despite Mr. Paul's involvement on her behalf and uh, representation. Court finding that I don't think she's got the financial resources while locked up to pay additional amounts. All right, Mr. Paul, are you aware of anything further we need to address today? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much for your timely appearance here today. Hold on. Mr. Paul. Hold on. Can they give you... Yeah, can I get a week to prepare for this? She this? is my employee. This 27 months of my life that I'm going to be locked up. I need to say bye to my kids. And I'm my not family. understanding a thing you're saying, ma'am. Can I get at least a week to be able to say goodbye to my kids and my family? No, absolutely um, not. Absolutely not. My employee, sir. And, like, uh, she spent the last two months getting her life together at least for that much like, to I come and work for me. Like this court disagrees. Up. Getting her life together would have included reporting to her officer. And she didn't well, even I, make the effort to do that one time, according to Mr. Ketley. So I'm not sure what your involvement is here, sir, but the court's order stands. 
she's in custody of the sheriff's office until she can be transferred to the secretary of corrections in their custody. Can you get my affairs together? Like at no, least 20 no, I'm not going to defer your time. You, you need to go into custody today, Ms. Reynolds. Sir, can you leave, please? Uh, can I give her a hug? Can you leave, please? That's up to the I'm, officer. I'm not going to be You're not going to be cousin in court. Sorry, sorry. Sir. Jill, did you have something else you needed to bring to the attention of the court? No, Judge, I was just filling out all of the notes that I have to for the general entry. I've right. started. Thank you to the officer on scene of being able to take her into custody at this time. If well, there's nothing are... further then, excuse me. Sorry, do I hear someone? I was talking to her. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I okay. Okay. Again, thank you. If there's nothing further, then the Holly Reynolds matter will be in recess at this time. And this.